Senate Joint Resolution 7 by Senator Pan relative to physicians. Dr. Pan. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Members, uh, today I rise to present to you SJR 7, a resolution that urges Congress and the President of the United States to renew funding for the Health Resources and Services Administration Teaching Health Center and Primary Care Residency Expansion Graduate Medical Education Programs. While urging them to lift the freeze on residency positions funded by Medicare to expand physician supply and to improve access to care. According to the 2014 report by the California Healthcare Foundation, although California has more than 105,000 licensed physicians, only 71,000 are actively involved in providing patient care. And federal funding levels for residency training programs have been frozen since 1997, while California's population has increased by more than 10% since that time. Medicare's rigid formulas for graduate medical education payments do not allow for the innovation needed to improve medical education, to produce physicians with appropriate training to need, needed to meet the nation's current and future health care needs, including here in California. Many primary care physicians, including those who have graduated from California medical schools, want to train in California, but are forced to leave the state because of shortages and training slots at residency programs here in our state. California has been able to address only a minimal portion of the primary care residency program's funding shortfall with state funds. Increasing funding for primary care medical residency training programs is a crucial step in addressing the physician shortage problem and improving access to medical care. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Senator Stone. Thank you, Madam President. I want to uh, commend uh, the author, SDR 7. We have a primary care physician shortage in the state of California at a time when we're assuming such great responsibility with covered California. More than a third of the state is covered in our Medi-Cal program. We need to increase these, uh, these residencies, and I want to applaud the author for urging more funding for those residencies. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Pam, would you like to close? Uh, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, please call roll. Allen? Anderson? Aye. Aye Bates? Aye. Aye Bell? Aye, Aye Berryhill? Aye. Aye Block? Aye, Aye Canella? Aye. Aye De Leon? Aye, Aye Fuller? Aye, Aye Gaines? Aye, Aye Galjoni? Aye. Aye Hall? Aye, Aye Hancock? Aye. Hernandez? Aye, Aye Hertzberg? Aye. Hill? Aye. Hertzberg? Aye Hill? Aye Hueso? I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, Morell, I Wynn, I Nielsen, I Pan, I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, Wachowski, I Wolk. Wolk I Allen I. Please call the absent members. Hancock. I Morlock Pavley Vida. I thirty six no zero. The resolution is adopted. File item twenty amendments pending. File item twenty one. Senate Bill seven seventy. Senator Mendoza. Senator Mendoza, pass on file. File item 22, amendments pending. File item 23, Senate Bill 426, Senator Leva. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 426 by Senator Leva, an act relating to annuities. Senator Leva. Good afternoon, Madam President and colleagues. I rise today to request your support for Senate Bill 426, which will protect seniors and their families by placing safeguards on an insurance product that is intended to provide those seniors with financial security. Specifically, this bill would prohibit companies from charging a surrender penalty on the death benefit of deferred annuities issued to consumers 65, eight, 65 years or older. Currently, mm -hmm. most companies do not pay out a death benefit that is less than the premiums paid. However, some insurers charge a surrender penalty that reduce the death benefit below the amount of the premiums paid. Beyond the obvious pain and grief of losing their loved one, the early death of a senior can also expose the beneficiaries to low effective interest or even loss in their annuities. Unfortunately, this is legal under current law. But 
something that we as legislators can change and correct with this bill. It is hard to imagine that we would penalize the accounts of seniors who pass away and leave beneficiaries with less than what was paid in premiums. Clearly, this should not happen. This bill is sponsored by the California Department of Insurance, supported by the Congress of California Seniors and California he Health Advocates, amongst others. SB 426 passed out of Insurance Committee with strong bipartisan support, and I am hopeful that it will be similar today. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Senator Gaines. Thank you, Madam President and members. I just uh, wanted to rise and uh, thank the Senator for bringing this bill forward. Uh, it truly is helpful for seniors. It, it, uh, it, it's a fair, more level playing field to make sure that they're getting the benefits that they deserve. I supported it insurance committee and would ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Hernandez. So, members, um, this is their first bill on the floor that you're presenting, is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> so, I mean, I think we should have some questions for Senator <laughs> Leyva for that. What do you, so I mean, so why do you want to help seniors? What's, what's your reason for that? Excuse me, Senator Hernandez, oh, could you go through the- Question to the author, please. Senator Leyva, are you uh, open to receive the question? I am open to proceed with questions. Proceed, Senator Hernandez. So, so why, do you wanna, why do you wanna help seniors? So seniors are the people who've given all their good years to our society and have worked hard, and in their years of need, we need to be there for them. All right, well, I'll accept that as an answer, and for that, I'll support your measure. Senator <laughs> Leyva, you, being your first bill in, on the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Hernandez. Senator Huff. Thank you, Madam President. Question to the author. Senator Leva? Yes. Proceed. Could you state, first and foremost, how you define a senior? <laughs> I believe that's anyone 65 and older in this bill. Well, I started receiving things after I was 45 or 50 saying I was a senior, so what about those others that think they're seniors? Well, that is a great question, but this bill will only help those who are 65 and older. For others, maybe we could do something for them next bill season. Did you happen to calculate how many people might be casting a vote here that would be self-dealing, that might be included in that category of protected citizenship? I think a majority, so that would help me. <laughs> no further questions. Thank you very much, Senator Huff. Is there any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, is there uh, any objection to the use of a unanimous roll call? Okay, there is an objection. Senator Leva, why don't we have you close and then we'll have roll call. May I state my reason, Madam President? Um, yes, Senator Stone. I, I would Stone. like to state my reason. I think it's a uh, very uh, important endeavor to have your first bill on the floor of the Senate, and I think it's appropriate to have a roll call in honor of our, our senator that wrote this very important bill. So, With that, Senator Stone, Senator Thank Leva, you, would you like to close? I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, colleagues. With that, Secretary, please call this very important roll. Allen. Aye. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Aye. Bates. Aye. Aye. Bell. Aye. Berryhill. Block. Canella. Aye. Aye. De Leon. Fuller. Aye. Aye. Gaines. Aye. Aye. Galgioni. Aye. Aye. Hall. Aye. Aye. Hancock. I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, Huff, No, Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Morning, I Morlock, Morell, I Win, I Nelson. I Pan, Aye. I Pavley, Roth, Aye. I Runner, Aye. I Stone, Fidak, Wachowski, Aye. I Wolk. Wolk I. Would you call the absent members? Bell, I Berryhill, I Block, Aye. I De Leon, Aye. I Hueso, Aye. I Morlock, Pavley, Stone, aye. aye. Vidak. Huff, no to aye. 
Senator Leva, ayes 36, no, zero. Your measure passes. Moving on to file item 24, Senate Bill 142, Senator Jackson will pass on file. File item 25, SB 186, Senator Jackson. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. I mean, please read. Senate Bill 186 by Senator Jackson and Ackland Community College Districts. Senator Jackson. Thank you, Madam President and colleagues. I bring forward SB 186 as part of a continuing commitment to address student sexual assault. This measure uh, has received bipartisan support. According to the Department of Justice, one in five college women will experience rape or attempted rape during their time as a college student, and this reality can have devastating impacts for its victims. A 2014 report released by the White House states, quote, students experience some of the highest rates of sexual assault on campus or during their period as a student. This violence and the stress, fear, and, and mental health challenges that often follow combine to increase the dropout rates and limit opportunities for success in college for women and girls. This bill does three things. First, community colleges have the authority to suspend or expel a student for good cause, which is usually defined as cheating or plagiarism or some behavior on campus. SB 186 expands the definition of good cause to include sexual assault and sexual exploitation that may occur on or off campus. Second, it enables community college districts to use their existing disciplinary process to remove, expel, or ex uh, suspend students for off-campus sexual assault and sexual exploitation, regardless of the victim's affiliation with the college, thus aligning the authority of community colleges with the authority of our colleges within the UC and CSU system to hold students accountable for sexual violence. And finally, it provides community colleges with the clear authority under state law to fully comply with federal Title IX requirements by ensuring students and victims can pursue an education in a safe campus environment. The existing disciplinary process on community college campuses will ensure due process of law in all proceedings. This measure applies only to acts committed while a student is currently enrolled and all students in California, I think you will agree, deserve a, st a safe campus community. This measure provides community colleges with one of the tools necessary to ensure that safety. And with that, I would ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Senator Jackson. Uh, discussion and debate, Senator Fuller. Members, I am clearly against rape and sexual assault. And I've clearly enforced that for most of my career. And I do commend the spirit of this bill and the author's intent. However, this bill needs to be amended because it will unleash more harm than good in its current status. And I think it can be amended. This bill requires no more than an accusation to trigger a disciplinary board hearing. There is no required report to the police. There is no reasonable standard of evidence. It can be anyone, any place. Um, there, I have, I have investigated many sexual harassment complaints and prosecuted some. It is very, very difficult. It is very touchy. It is very sensitive. And it is hate-filled and charged. The college campuses really do not need this extra burden given to them. I don't believe they have the do tools to do it well. And certainly we cannot just surpass due process because think of all the different things that could happen. All the different ways people could make accusations without evidence. All the hearings that could be potentially damaging to people who maybe were just in the vicinity and had mistaken identity. That happens a lot in our society. We're worried about it now a lot <clears throat> with law enforcement. 
And so one of the things I think this bill needs to be is amended in, 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 a, in a way that it would continue to allow us to have due process rights for the accused. This is an important bill, and the subject is important. But let's do it correctly and not ask community college educators to have to do the job law enforcement. Thank you. Senator De Leon. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, colleagues, I rise in support of SB 186, and I want to thank Senator Hannah Beth Jackson for introducing this very important measure. All students deserve a education, an education free of violence and trauma, whether they live or not live on a campus. With the passage of SB 967 last year that I co-authored with uh, Senator Hannah Beth Jackson, we established an affirmative sexual consent standard on college campuses, making it the first application of the yes means yes uh, in the nation. Through that bill, California took steps to protect college students against sexual assault and violence. SB 186 will only further this important effort. Sexual assaults have to be treated with utmost seriousness by school administrators. These events are dramatically, these events dramatically impact not only the edu educational experience of a student, but in many cases also have very long lasting emotional, psychological, as well as sometimes very physical consequences. Sexual assaults is a problem that most certainly impacts students outside of college campuses. And it cannot be eradicated by addressing campus policies alone. However, I do believe strongly that colleges are uniquely positioned to address the needs of students and provide for their safety. That does mean holding perpetrators fully accountable for their actions. Whatever mechanical aspects of the measure that has to be engaged with still, you know, I'm not in a position right now uh, to uh, 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 comment on that, but I do know, um, as um, one of our colleagues just mentioned, we all collectively uh, uh, bore and defiantly are in opposition to any type of sexual assault or violence on any college campus or off college campus. I'm sure we'll all work things out at the end of the day, and I know that we'll, we are united against this. So with that, I just respectfully ask for an I vote. Senator Bell. Members, I rise in support of this uh, legislation. Um, in, in my local area, uh, there has been many cases of uh, problems related to sexual assault, sexual harassment, both on and off the campus. We had a horrible incident at, um, uh, involving students at De Anza College, and, and um, it was a horrible incident where uh, a, a group of students uh, attacked and assaulted, sexually assaulted another student uh, off campus. And to me, to me um, uh, we need to, in the community colleges, establish uh, more clear and firmer guidelines and laws related to uh, conduct on this issue, and Senator Jackson's bill does that. Uh, I further think that uh, the chancellor of the California community colleges ought to set up a, uh, some kind of um, uh, Title IX committee or some kind of committee to deal with some of these issues and uh, issue uh, directives and guidelines for the whole system of community colleges to um, clarify um, uh, a, a policy of no tolerance of, of these kinds of actions. Um, specifically, people in my district have asked me to support that, and I would like to see that, that uh, actually implemented by the chancellor. There, right now, there is no action in the part of the chancellor to any great degree uh, on these issues, and we need to, to have a system-wide approach to this issue, and that's what Senator Jackson's bill does. So I uh, firmly am in support of this bill and uh, urge even further action um, by the chancellor of our community, California community colleges. Senator Leno. Thank you, Madam President. I have a question of the author. Without objection. Thank you. Senator Jackson, this bill is just for community colleges, and my understanding is that's because this is already policy at the California State Universities and at the University of California. That is correct. That is uh, the requirement. The community colleges are the only one of our three institutions of higher education who claim not to have this authority. This will give them the same authority that the university has and that our CSUs have. 
And I would imagine we're all similarly concerned with questions of due process as have already been expressed. Have these due process concerns been realized at CSU or at UC? Have you heard of any abuse of this type of policy? No, this, these uh, programs, these policies and these disciplinary proceedings would be fought, would have to follow along the lines of existing proceedings which all do require and have due process associated with them, not only at the UC level and the CSU level, but the community college level with their disciplinary proceedings, which also have due process requirements. This would simply be incorporated as part of it. Thank you. Uh, just to conclude, the issue of due process is one to consider and make sure that we remain concerned of it. If this were a novel concept, and it were not as tested and true as it already is, if we didn't have some experience to look back on and make some determinations, I think this would be more debatable. But given that we have a real track record with it and matching that with the epidemic of assault on campus, I'll be supporting the bill today. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Leva. Thank you, Madam President. I rise in support of SB 186 it is appalling and tragic that in the year 2015, there are still so many sexual assaults and rapes that occur not only in our society, but so many on college campuses. I understand opponents of this bill feel that these sexual assaults and rapes should be reported and be charged in the criminal activity that they are. I couldn't agree more. But the problem is, is that most survivors of sexual assault feel victimized when they report this as a crime. So this bill would just give victims and survivors one more tool, one more vehicle in making sure that they actually report these heinous crimes. So I thank the author for bringing it forward and I urge an I vote. Senator Stone. Thank you, Madam President. First, I'd like to uh, applaud Senator uh, for bringing this this forward. I have zero tolerance for any type of sexual assaults uh, in schools, uh, in our communities, and uh, it's been reflected in uh, my voting record as a local elected official for the past 23 years. I'm going to support this bill today because I believe it's going to potentially take uh, sexual assault uh, perpetrators uh, away from uh, their potential victims. But I still want to say that I share the concern uh, about due process and, and people that are wrongly accused, and it does happen in times, um, in same-sex relationships and opposite-sex relationships. Uh, relationships break up and people get wrongly accused, and here we're creating potentially a situation where somebody can be expelled from school, from community college, before they even face a court of their peers. And this could have devastating consequences on one's future and, and being tainted uh, and vilified. So um, I'm hoping that the author will continue to refine the due process process to ensure that if somebody is wrongly accused and they have a very uh, good case to defend themselves, that the community colleges would take that into strong consideration before automatically expelling somebody from a community college. But I support the author. I support what she's trying to do and commend her for that. Thank you. Senator Anderson. I, uh, I rise also in support. I, I think that the, the issue is of uh, paramount importance, but that's not why I'm supporting this bill, because uh, sexual assault on campuses needs to be stopped, but nowhere in this bill does it require that the law enforcement be informed. Nowhere in this bill are there protections for the perpetrators because it doesn't require under penalty of perjury that their testimony is truthful. But it will have a chilling effect on sexual activity on campuses. And for that reason, I commend the senator and I will be supporting it. Any further discussion or debate? <laughs> senator Fuller. Question to the author. Without objection. Senator Jackson, Thank go ahead. You. Senator Jackson, clearly your, your intent, as I stated earlier, your earlier, is good. And clearly we all agree on this floor that it must be stopped and there's a problem and that you have found a problem. 
If I could have your assurance that you would look over the bill and be sure before it finishes its final moment that along the way that there would not, that there would be a clause that made it stronger to make sure that the accused due process rights were upheld. I would, I would at least abstain today because I think I need very much to know that the university is not going to be saddled with things they can't do, that they won't be sued because they couldn't do them, and ultimately be, that, that there are innocent people because young people sometimes are volatile. And I'm just curious as to how you feel about that. Well, as a lawyer, as a former prosecutor, as the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, you can be sure that due process, which is one of the fundamental constitutional rights of our state and country, will be considered uh, as one of the paramount concerns of this bill. I think I've mentioned it, that due process is already part of the proceeding. We expect nothing less going forward. Uh, if it's necessary to re uh, reassert that due process rights are part of it. I think it's already in the bill. I'm certainly willing to restate that. But due process is part of the fundamental rights uh, that we have in this state. And certainly as someone committed to justice and to the Constitution, I certainly want to make sure that due process continues to be one of our fundamental rights here in California. Thank you. With that acclamation of support, I will feel comfortable in trusting you to vote for your bill today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Jackson, would you like to close? Thank you. Yes, I certainly appreciate the debate and uh, Senator Anderson's perspective, not one I had thought of previously, but um, you know, you take those votes where you can find them. I would like to encourage everyone to come see a film that's going to be played tomorrow night for free at the Crest Theater, sponsored by the Women's Caucus, called The Hunting Ground. It is a most compelling statement about sexual assault on our campuses today. It is chilling. And it is real. And part of the reason for bringing this bill is that the victims of sexual assault on campus, number one, rarely report it. Number two, rarely are able to get any kind of accountability from the perpetrator and frequently will leave college rather than have to confront the, the perpetrator, the rapist, either in class, in a dorm, on campus. This is a real real problem. And what this bill does is that it simply calls upon the community colleges of California to have the same responsibility that we have imposed on the university and the CSUs to make sure that when students come forward with these allegations that they are taken seriously and that if during the course of a uh, proceeding that is held on campus. We do this now, you know, we throw students out of school for plagiarism faster than we throw them out of school for sexual assault and rape. We need to have a process in place that is going to A, protect these victims, and B, make our college campuses safer. The proceedings will allow the community colleges to take some form of action, everything from a suspension some form of discipline to potentially expulsion. We know as much as it would be wonderful if victims of rape would not only come forward, but would come forward and talk to the police. And if you see this film, what you will discover is something that many of us who've been following this issue for years know, is that the police and law enforcement isn't always very sympathetic. And that we see these victims being victimized again. It is time for our colleges, the place where we train the leaders of the future, the place where we put our hopes in that future, the place that we invest in that future, to take responsibility for punishing that kind of behavior, which is criminal in a criminal context, and yet at the university and college setting, we do not allow for the punishments that are available in the criminal justice system, but they do have the ability to take action on their own campuses. That is what this bill attempts to do. It is one that I think uh, is critically important to eradicating this incredible disease, if you will, that's going on on campus. It's a plague on our students, it's a plague on our future, and it's a plague on us. I would ask for your I vote. 
Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? I. Anderson? I. Bates? I. Bell? I. Berryhill? Block? I. Canella? I. De Leon? I. Fuller? I. Gaines? I. Galjoni? I. Hall? Hancock? I. Hernandez? I. Hertzberg? Hill? I. Hueso? I. Huff? Jackson? I. Lada? I. Leno? I. Leva? I. Lou? I. McGuire? I. Mendoza? I. Mitchell? I. Monning? I. Morlock? Morell? I. Wynn? I. Nielsen? I. Pan? I. Pavley? Roth? I. Runner? I. Stone? I. Vidak? Wykowski? I. Wolk? Wolk, I? Call the absent members. Barry Hill? I. Hall? I. Hertzberg? Huff? I. Morlock? Pavley? Vidak? Ayes 35, no zero. The measure passes.